Okay, so let's go ahead and move on with the agenda. So, um, Jose, I will turn it over to you, and um, I look forward to uh, your presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, David, and uh, congratulations on putting this together. I think it is important uh, to deal with these fundamental issues about intelligence, superintelligence, and collective superintelligence. Uh, so I have actually prepared a PowerPoint for maybe about um, uh, 15 minutes about the future of intelligence and what I call the intelligence of the future. I am living in Spain, which used to be the country of non plus ultra. Uh, but then with the discovery of the America, the country took away the non and it became the plus ultra country, the country of far beyond. And now I say intelligence far beyond. And in fact, I'm very happy that there are some friends from Spain working on artificial intelligence with really many creative ideas. Uh, one um, initiative called Avatar Cognition. So they are watching here, so I'm really proud and happy. Uh, three years ago, I organized a conference uh, called Transvision, which is the global transhumanist conference. And we had a focus on artificial intelligence and robotics. So much that we brought robot Sofia uh, to Madrid for the first time. And now she has become popular in Spain. And I brought her again for the election last month in Madrid. She was the news commentator on TV, national TV, about the elections in Madrid. So this was really, really exciting to have Sofia, uh, not just uh, giving a presentation, but being on TV, giving uh, results on the election. And uh, from my alma mater, MIT, I'm really proud to say that MIT was the first university that created a, a new AI program with an endowment of $1 billion. And basically, MIT now is requiring uh, all the students to take some courses about artificial intelligence because this is what will change humanity, artificial intelligence. Also, one colleague from MIT, Tom Malone, he created the MIT Center for Collective Intelligence. And I think this is a fantastic initiative in terms of thinking about this collective super intelligence as well. All countries are realizing that this is a key to the future. Like Vladimir Putin, basically he has said that AI uh, will uh, change the world. Whoever controls AI might rule the world, but not only Russia, China even more, and China has stopped private companies besides government initiatives about artificial intelligence. And just um, a couple of days ago, some news also about this incredible new AI uh, system uh, from China, this platform, uh, which is uh, uh, improving exponentially, as I like to say, exponentiality also on artificial intelligence. And this is blowing away GPT-3 in terms of what we are going to see soon as well. From China, also from India, in fact, from many places, even in Europe, uh, French President uh, Macron, Macron is talking about the urgent need for Europe to work on artificial intelligence. And um, the two major superpowers, uh, China and the USA, should also consider basically uh, working together for a new world order. So let's be also positive. And this is Kei Fu Li, who is a, a top personality in China, an expert from academia, business, and now government. Some of um, uh, the recent books are uh, super intelligence that had a major impact on Elon Musk and some other people written by our friend, uh, Nick Bostrom, who was co-founder of the World Transhumanist Association. And I am now the vice chair, the vice president of Humanity Plus, which is how we call today the World Transhumanist Association. Also, a few years back, one of my students, Roman Jampolski, he was a student of mine uh, a decade ago at Singularity University. He, he 
um, is very good in AI. Obviously, he lives in this area and he's also concerned about the existential risks posed by AI. And obviously, uh, Ben Gortzel, who is the chairman of uh, Humanity Plus today and who coined the world the word AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, and, and he has written extensively about the AGI revolution. So those are three of the important books. I, I forget uh, to include this one by also another MIT colleague, Max Tegmark, which is Life 3.0, uh, where he talks basically about artificial intelligence uh, for good and for bad. Um, in the Millennium Project that I coordinate for uh, Ibero America, which is Latin America plus Spain and Portugal, we talk about the 15 global challenges. And, and global challenge number 14 is science and technology, particularly today AI. And we just published a book, a fantastic study, a three year study with um, future experts, foresight experts about uh, science and technology and the future of work by 2050. And we basically have three scenarios, uh, the mixed one, the bad one, and the good one. And we also talk about three intelligence, in intelligences, artificial narrow intelligence, artificial general intelligence, and artificial super intelligence. I recommend that you download this study from the website of the Millennium Project because it is very extensive and it has a lot of um, interesting, fantastic information about these scenarios for the year 2050 and how we have to move on from the old way of seeing the future uh, as separate compartments in a linear way and we have to move into a global world of exponentiality where everything is connected, where everything is synergetic. And also how we are going to augment our brains. Uh, this connection between artificial intelligence and human brains, uh, like the famous company Neuralink, but many other companies are beginning to work on this. And obviously also government organizations in the USA, in Russia, in China, and, and also in the European Union. Uh, the French and the German government are talking about how important this is, especially even for soldiers. In, in France, the government is to connect soldiers to artificial intelligence. So we will be connecting humans and robots, and we will keep on moving up uh, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy, hierarchy of needs, from physiological needs to self-realization of humans. Imagine what Steve Jobs and Bill Gates have done you know 30 years ago if they had the technology that we have today and imagine how many new steve jobs and bill gates we will have now that there are no limits to knowledge there there is no limit to uh, globalization today with basically free internet for the whole planet soon even for the poorest people in africa in india anywhere everywhere but there are people who don't want technology. We have the Amish, very well known. They want to live in the 18th century. They don't want electricity. They don't want cars. They don't want telephones. They don't want internet. So some people don't want technology. I grew up in South America and there are many Indian communities like the Yanomami. The Yanomami, they live like they have been living for thousands of years in the past. They don't even want to use clothes and they don't want to speak uh, other languages like Spanish or Portuguese. So this is their decision. But probably also 5,000 years ago, when the will was invented, there were the anti-will people. There will always be people against technologies, even in Britain, where the industrial revolution began, they had the Luddites. And now we have the neo-Luddites who don't want technology, who don't want artificial intelligence, who don't want uh, robots. So there are four ways to think about the future. The worst way is to be passive like an ostrich and basically suffer the future, horrible. The best way is to be proactive, to create the future, to build the future we want. So I hope that there are no ostriches here. But if we have ostriches, 
they should use technology and they should use this to fly and see the future. Uh, AI is disrupting everything. Everything will be disrupted. So at Singularity University, we had this very famous phrase, Uber yourself before you get Kodak. And this is happening in every single industry, shopping, entertainment, advertising, education, all the way to government. There is disruption and very accelerated thanks to artificial intelligence. About 15 years ago, I went to visit Sir Arthur C. Clarke, who is so famous for uh, a Space Odyssey 2001 and many other uh, visionary novels, science fiction, but he also wrote, wrote the three laws of the future. The first one, when a famous scientist says that something is possible, he's probably right. But when the scientist says it is impossible, he's probably wrong. Second law, the only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture a little way past those limits into the impossible. And the third law, that was retweeted just today by Elon Musk. Elon Musk just wrote this today in his tweet. You have to check it because he, he twisted uh, Sir Arthur C. Clarke's law into this. Listen to this. He said, any sufficiently advanced magic is indistinguishable from technology. This is what Elon Musk wrote today in Twitter. Really fantastic, fantastic comment. So. Some technologies of the past, 30 years ago, computers were becoming popular, 20 years ago, cell phones throughout the world, 10 years ago, Google, Facebook, Wikipedia, everywhere. So what will happen in the next 10, 20, 30 years? Well, artificial intelligence is coming and immortality with it. We talk about these exponential technologies changing faster, smarter, cheaper and better things. I like to say that when I began my first computer class uh, 40 years ago, I used the IBM punch cards that were 1K of memory, 1K of memory. I used that. And uh, fortunately, technology advanced and we moved into floppy disk with more memory. But the first ones that were also eight inches big were also 1K. The first generation of floppy disk, 1K, then they became smaller and bigger and more powerful. And today we have USB pen drives of one terabyte. So we have moved from 1K to one terabyte. And this continues, this continues exponentially. And uh, my dear friend, Ray Kurzweil, that I met when I was in MIT, where he's uh, also part of the board of directors of MIT, uh, where he graduated under Marvin Minsky, who was also a professor of mine, Marvin Minsky at MIT, he wrote this book, The Singularity is Near, that uh, basically has popularized the idea of the singularity. And now he will be talking about the new version, The Singularity is Nearer. This book comes out in a few months and he will be presenting it in Madrid. So welcome to Madrid to see The Singularity is Nearer or his previous book, How to Create a Mind, where he talks about how we are going to create artificial minds. This is really impressive. And I actually translated the book and wrote the introduction in Spanish. So I welcome you to learn Spanish and read it in Spanish. Uh, when we began Singularity University, and it was one of the founding faculty, we talked about all of these ideas that became more and more popular. And uh, most people know today that the singularity is supposed to happen by the year 2045. This is when artificial intelligence uh, surpasses human intelligence. And we talked about two years, the year 2029 for passing the Alan Turing test and the year 2045 for reaching the singularity the singularity and also immortality, because this is happening also in biology. Now that we have sequenced the human genome, medicine is being digitized and therefore it is moving exponentially. Also in synthetic biology, we will be able to create human genomes by 2045 probably. 
and you can see the incredible advances in uh, sequencing the genome. This is moving even faster, even much faster than Moore's law. And we will be connecting our brains to the internet. Uh, we will create a fourth part of the brain, which will be the exocortex, exocortex that will give us super intelligence. We will move from the original reptilian uh, brain into the exocortex of super intelligence because our brain is actually very small. Even though it is the most complex structure in the known universe, it's very small, and we will surpass the power of the brain by 2045. And companies like Neuralink are working on that. And uh, Ray Kurzweil, he talks that uh, uh, the three bridges towards immortality and the singularity, thanks to artificial intelligence as well. And we at Humanity Plus, we talk about the three pillars of uh, humanity, transhumanity, post-humanity, which are unlimited longevity, unlimited intelligence, and unlimited well-being. Because we humans, we are not the end of evolution. We are only the beginning of intelligent evolution. And we have to meditate. These are deep things. We have to uh, consider ethical, moral, religious aspects. So I love to meditate in many different ways. And to put this into context, let's remember, as the Chinese say, everything has yin and yang. And this is so complex that even yin yang inside has little, little yin yang, and even more yin, 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 yin yang. So this is complex, and we have to be ready for the dark side of the force. And I finish with this beautiful Chinese word that means crisis. Crisis in Chinese has two characters. The first one is danger, but the second one is opportunity. And that opportunity is provided by collective super intelligence. So we have to join forces together with artificial intelligence. I welcome you all to come to Madrid for the next Transhumanist Global Summit in October after the pandemic, October uh, 8 to 12th of October in Madrid. And thank you, thank you so much for uh, the time to share these ideas. And I'll be happy at the end to have any questions or comments, please.